the next one is we'll get into your screw threads. So 201 is a little bit heavy, okay? Just material wise is too much. Don't worry about it. You get it. Alright, so uh, I'm gonna get into uh, screw threads, alright? How to dimension the screw thread. So this is your screw wheel and then you have your thread right there on the screw. So number one, uh, what you're gonna do is a simplified version which is uh, what we use all the time, you know, meaning like commonly used method, simplified version. Um, so let's take a look at how we do that. So this is your screw thread um, and we're going to uh, draw like this, okay? And we're going to dimension like that. Here, schematic form like this. See the thread? So this is your schematic version. This is a simplified version of your screw thread. And that's the uh, details, okay? See how we draw detail. See how different simplified, schematic, and detail form. All right, now we're gonna start dimensioning, and you follow, of course, in SIY 14.6 AM SI by 14.6 AM metric, yeah. 45 degree angle, yeah. Where uh, is here? Yeah, somewhere here. Yeah. Uh, I can break this for you. So this is a little bit easier for you to read. About 45 angle to the horizontal, and here is your leader line, and then the, here is your dimension. Okay. So what are these things? So you have your major diameter and then you have your number of threads, yeah? And then you have your, your thread form series, yeah? Class. So here, this is your class of fit, your thread form series, yeah? And then your threads per inch. So the end of the screw thread is going to chamfer like this, yeah? Here, chamfer, chamfer. 45 degree angle unless specify otherwise and your external thread yeah external thread is designed by your uh, the A yeah following the class fit internal thread we want to use a B thread yeah instead of the A thread um, again this is from your MET 101 um, review yeah so here is your table for your screw thread you can see the diameter yeah your NC and your NC thread uh, this is your thread per inch kind of off here okay, I fix this stuff so this looks a little better so here's your diameter and then your NC and your NC threads per inch and then your NF this is just a fine that's coarse okay and then this one is extra fine, right? Uh, threads. Okay, so that's all. Um, and then your class, of course, your A's and then your B classes are in here. There for you. Okay, the shoulder. Yeah. Um, the shoulder. You have like a. This is in this example, of course, you have a bold head. Yeah. So right here. Is under that bolt head, so perfect screw thread yeah you know, cannot be formed up a uh, snark a uh, snug against a perpendicular shoulder right there yeah you know, that is not actually perpendicular in this case. So if the bolt is intended to advance into receiving the tap hold right all the way to the head, the last two or three threads so around here are often removed. And that's because you have to avoid a conflict with the threads. So basically what's saying is like, okay, you got to remove around here to separate the thread and the head. Okay, so this area is what you're seeing. Yeah? The area that's the thread's been removed uh, in that area. And here there's a diameter, yeah? And you have two of them right there because this is like a little, yeah? Look at that arc. See this little arc right there? And um, this one, okay, see this little thing, the black one, yeah, two of them here, yeah. So the radius of the little tiny arc is a 0 0.02 maximum, okay.
internal thread. We have a three screw thread dimensioning here. Symbol, you can see it there. Major diameter, hidden lines, minor diameter in there. Here is your dimension little line, yeah. Radial, meaning like there's a little angle. And it's gonna to attach to the solid line. Don't attach to this hidden line. Okay. Here, refer to your table, okay? So, UNF, you go right here for your UNF, right? So, that's for your fine thread. So, this is just a uh, UN mean, like, okay, it's just a course for C, right? This is just a, a unified, okay? UN for unified. And it's just telling you your national yeah, course of threat. This is unified national course threat. So these are just your review from your MET 101, okay? So national course, unified national course, national fine, unified national fine, and then national extra fine, unified. Just going to put it back into this. I mean, his slides are pretty bad. Um, unified extra, yeah, extra fine, unified extra fine, unified national extra fine. Okay, so let's go back to here. So that's where you and I come from, yeah, from the table. And then this is your class type, which is here, okay. Dimension, we're going to dimension this internal screw thread, object line, leader head, do not point to the hidden line, but to the object line, four of them, you can only give it to one, and then this is your thread, because we're telling you that this is, this is a screw, okay? So you have your B, your internal thread, A, it's an external thread, okay? And then you have your class fit, okay? Which is this this guy, yeah? This is class fit, and this guy is your unified national course, yeah? Giving you the series of that, the thread form. So 20 is your number of thread, okay, on that screw thread. So that's a number of 20 threads per inch. And this one is your decimal, okay, dimension. So 0 0.250, right, which is this guy, times 4, right? So times 4 here. So that's a, uh, how you read it, okay? Diameter, yeah? Number of thread, okay. We're gonna put our series, which is your UNF was N N C U N C or UNF, okay. In this case, it's U N C, U for unified, N for national, C is for course, and F is for fine, and E F is for extra fine, okay. From this table, uh, B is your internal and uh, external yeah, thread of your screw thread, okay. I think you got it. We do the same thing. Here we have a socket head cap screw drawing, okay? Not a detailed drawing. So drawing we have three types, don't forget it. Okay. So we have we're doing this little one, which is a schematic yeah? uh, form right here. Diameter, number of threads per inch, your UNC, okay, Unify National Court series. Type, okay, external, yeah, and then LH. LH is just talk, talking about right hand or left hand, all right, thread. So here you got the left hand thread. Okay, 
Next one. Here's a tucked hole. A right hand threat. In this example, we have LH, which is left hand threat. B for internal. Yeah. Your cross fit. Two is your cross fit. B is your internal. LH is for left hand. UNC is for uniform national courts. 20 threads per inch. And that's your diameter. Okay. All right. We do the same thing. Four of them. M, okay, is your matrix thread form, major diameter, of course. This one is your pitch, and here is your tolerance, okay, H internal thread. And these are matrix screw threads, so we dimension in a little different way, yeah? The, uh, this is your tolerance uh, grade. All right, then we go to the next socket head cup screw, left hand thread. So left hand threads here, metric, major, pitch, tolerance grade, left hand, okay. Matrix screw thread, eight, okay, eight of them. So if you count one, two, three, four, Okay, of course this is going uh, that direction, and 1.25, yeah. So up to the matrix, matrix screw threads, which is your M8 times 1.25 pitch in your diameter. We're going to get into your matrix screw, the uh, next one is uh, head, hex head bolts, right? And your hex nuts, which is this. So we have a projection right here. Um, this can be also used as your ha uh, your nut uh, fastener, you yeah? know. And we have we have just a true projection, yeah, of this uh, bolt. And this is our dimension values, and here is your leader. Okay, touching the object line right there for you. Your type fit, yeah, your UNC. This is 13, okay, 13 um, thread per inch, and then your diameter. So you have 13 thread, so one, two, three, and each, yeah, is going to have like a 0.5 diameter all across um, this width, yeah, and of course, um, your, your uh, diameter doesn't change, okay, so here you can be able to see it in a circle from here to there. This is incorrect projection of that, yeah, that's a correct projection. Um, we have the same dimension for this hex head bolts and hex nut. All right, next one. Here we have all bolts and nuts and their projections, okay? So we're just following the uh, national and also international standards. So how to um, draw your bolts nuts. Of course, you can really see, yeah, it's uh, this is your nut and the projection of that uh, from this way. Okay. So gnarly is uh, here, yeah, you can see, see a little, like a little diamond shape right there. Um, so that's just a gnarly on the external feature and making this type of shape on it, on an object. 
um, requires the type of knot is diamond in this case, your pitch of course, and then your diameter, your diameter pitch uh, before the knurling. So this is your diameter before knurling. It just get this diameter and dimension it. Yeah. Um, from here to here is your a full nerve. Yeah. So that's just so you will get this number from your sheet. So all you have to do is to show where that number goes, which is here. Yeah. Full now, and then your diameter before knurling. And this is your diameter of this, and then the pitch. So for this part, your pitch is your point eight raised. Okay. Your diamond knot is raised on, on top of this feature. So the slides uh, uh, of this order is pretty bad. So anyways, I will I will uh, I guess, uh, re uh, redo your PDF for you. Okay, just wait for for me. I'll do the first thing uh, uh, as soon as I get time. Okay. Um, okay, since he did it with a white, right, white lines, uh, we are by default our printers so are like the white background. So I have to change it back to the color background for you to be able to see it. So that's pink, but it's okay, we'll do that yeah, for you. So here we'll continue our gnarling the external feature, and this time. We have pitch 0 0.8 and we have our straight now, yeah, diameter 20 minimum after narrowing before narrowing is uh, 19.7, 20, okay, uh, diameter, that's because you are putting this knot right above, yeah, I mean like you have extra material on top of the original one, so the original diameter is a 19.7, so now you get like about 0 0.3 up, yeah. Uh, because of the knurling machining that happened on, on here. And then here is your full nar 12.5. And then this is this side, which is your diameter and your pitch. This side, your pitch is 0 0.8. Okay. Okay, so your pitch, yeah, 0 0.8 straight now. About 20 diameter is 20. After Nolly, before it was 19.7, yeah. We are reading each one of them, and we have a 12.5 full null right there because the null is from here to here. There's no null here, no null here. And this side is your regular one, 1.25 pitch, and then your diameter and eight in metric. External chamfer. So here, this little thing, see, it's your chamfer, and you, we have, um, 12 times 45, yeah, 12 times 0.12. So we're using a leader, which is your local note. So that's how we dimension the chamfer, yeah, with the angle 45. Um, this is again a review from your MET 101 chamfer. Okay, the next chamfer is right here, yeah. So this one is so you have 30 instead of 45. We're going to specify it, yeah. In this way and dimension it that way. Okay, so 30 degree chamfer. The distance from the uh, edge is from here to the chamfer is 0 0.10. And this is your angle vertex extension. Yeah, but from this surface, the chamfer arm is right here. Yeah, and you got your angle. All right, and so we got to deal with the internal chamfer. Yeah, so here is your internal diameter, and then times forty-five degree angle. So another one right there, ninety. Yeah. Um, your diameter, one point two five zero. Different way of dimensioning. Diameter is one one two five zero, and the chamfer angle is forty-five. Okay, so you can either do this, that, or this way when you dimension the chamfer. Okay, chain line application for the controlling surface area. 
So chain line is you have like a long and then short and a long and then short dashes, right? See, uh, uh, pay attention, okay? So at that time you will do this type of dimensioning. So here we have a surface for a uh, revolution, yeah? and uh, your chain line needs to be shown only on one side. You don't have to show on this side. So why do we need a chain line? Is so uh, we're just showing where we want to do the grinding, coating, polishing. Okay, some sort of machining, right? And on that part from here to here, that's what we're gonna do. So you put a chain line on it. Okay, so when you're controlling specify a uh, surface area, and if you have the extent of the surface, you know, control are clear and you don't need dimensioning, okay? Because here the control is pretty clear, so you don't really have to dimension like this. Dimensioning means like putting a dimension line. See? I have no dimension line. Why? because the external dust surface control is clear yeah? okay to deal with a smaller area yeah, on a large surface to be controlled then we've got to use a boundary yeah boundary of the chain lines you would dimension them like this okay this is for the limited space that we um show dimension for the boundary okay of that chain. So here, da -da -da -da, so this is where you're machining. So we're going to show from here to here, from here to here, yeah, to the boundary. Okay, key seats and key weights. All right, so here we have key seats and the key weights. Uh, we're going to dimension, we're going to give the location of that, yeah, we have our width and then your depth the depth of the keyway okay um you're gonna put it right there like this that this is your hole yeah or sometimes it's shaft uh, here's a little shaft and that's your little hole right there yeah so we will dimension that way okay so see arrow out and dimension in arrow and dimension in sorry the extension on it Flats, cylinders, okay. We got a dimension in this way. We show the line of the flat, okay. And here is your shaft center, yeah. Then we can cut it so you have your section lines right there. And then show kind of like I'm looking from this site. And then show the uh, um, from here to here, yeah. You know, there's the uh, a feature, there's a feature here, which is this guy, yeah. Oh my bad. And you will give the uh, land of that. Yes. And here, of course, uh, from the center. Yeah. This is kind of like off, by the way. And that's what it's saying occasionally. Yeah. You have your functional requirements. Sometimes you mandate the location of the flat from the shaft center. Okay. So, origin, origin based dimension limits. I try to make it a little bit easier for you to read. So linear dimension, uh, what we're used to, right? They're terminated at each end, and we put right as you show the little arrow hat. Um, sometimes, um, and we do do that all the time, putting the arrow hat on the linear dimension lines. But sometimes we don't do that. Okay, and at and that time is when it is necessary to establish the origin, you know, from which a measurement you know, must be taken. So dimension origin symbol is going to identify a surface. Okay. So um, you can't see it, and I'm going to show you in my next slide. So you can be able to see what it means, yeah, which a plane is determined by the high points on that surface. So anyway, so let's take a look at each one of them and start reading that. So here are the 
example for the origin phase dimension limit. So here we're going to start from 0 0.2462, 0 0.250. See how like just a little bit, yeah? Um, uh, your range, right? Your range is a very, very small amount. From here to here, again, your origin 0 0.562 plus or minus. 0.003, your tolerance zone right there, the origin points right here, dimension origin symbol right there, little circle, yeah. And here is your tolerance and the length. And here is your origin, another way of writing dimension where arrow in and dimension out. Okay, here is your tolerance, your angle. Then you have your angle 30 degree your tolerance plus or minus 0 0.50 and here is your origin point go from here all the way to there is the many angles okay with the tolerance of course so anyways that's a different way of dimensioning where we use the origin base yeah which is uh, limit origin base limit so from here to here is your limit from here to here is your limit from here to here is your limit your tolerance is with this dimension. And here is your origin. In this example, we'll go up. Here is your length and then your tolerance. So your control, right, is going to lie on this plane. So that's what the first slide is talking about. Yeah, see that plane? So from the pet mountain yeah, surface to the parallel plane above. So that's how the origin is and go up. This is just trying to show you your tolerance zone, yeah. Um because you can go plus or minus zero point zero zero four, so that's all together. Zero point zero zero eight tolerance zone. The same thing with down here, yeah, because it's gonna go origin start from this plane surface, then down your tolerance zones right here, plus or minus 0 0.004 total 0 0.008 tolerance zone. The same thing, but here we have a shorter surface, yeah, exaggerated uh, variations right here. Look at that, how it's like totally slanted. Yeah, your tolerance zone is zero point zero zero eight. Because your control changes, and it's applied. Your control is applied to the shorter yeah surface. Drawing this like this. Tolerance zone, origin. Gone up. Your interpretation. Okay. Then you're showing, yeah, from here to here, from here to here, and giving this much of tolerance zone, yeah. Drawing origin up there, so here tolerance zone down here, origin here, tolerance zone up there, okay, on the opposite side. Be careful. Then we'll go into tolerance standard, tolerance in standard. So we'll be using the geometric tolerances, okay? Coordinate tolerance. Um, we'll be looking at uh, each one of them. And our standard, we're going to stick to ASME Y 14.5 AM 1994.
Anyway, so these are what we're gonna get a look into it, okay? Intolerancy. So here. All right, so terms and definitions. You gotta know your actual size is your measure size, your data. It's just a point, okay, line or axis or plane. Um, the data feature, data feature, um, is where we establish the data here. I'll show you, yeah? Right now, I'll just read it. Target, of course, data target, another point line or area. Uh, we use it to establish a datum. A dimension, it's just a value, yeah? Of course, every value has some sort of unit. And you're going to define the size or characteristics, yeah, on a part or part feature. The feature is uh, it's just a physical part, yeah? Like a surface, a hole, or a slot on your object. Feature sites is uh, cylindrical or spherical surface, or a set of two planar parallel surfaces. And of course, each one of them has a size dimension. So don't worry about it, I'll show you. Yeah? Oh, this person pretty messed up. Like, okay, I gotta. Fixed it. Limits of size is your specified maximum and minimum size is your LMC, of course, your least amount of material. MMC is your maximum amount of material. So they're all your MAT 101 review. Reference dimension, again, uh, we use it for information purposes only. Your RFS, okay, is your uh, tolerance or datum reference. And then your tolerance. Just your amount, yeah, where your specific dimension is, uh, can be able to vary within that range. Tolerance unilateral, so you have a tolerance and you can vary, and that's permitted uh, only in one direction, yeah, by it's in two directions. You can just read through it, um, they're just both slides are reviewed for your MAT 101 definitions. Of course, then we get into uh, drawing, yeah, characteristics by type. So this is your problem number 36 in your book, okay? And so this is asking you, um, um, wait, what you have to do is you have to uh, give your characteristic, all right, characteristic here, location, feature, feature of sites. Um, and classify that in this table. We're going to use X for each characteristic in the correct column. Yeah, This is your given uh, diagram. I'm going to read it and put an X in there. So A is right here. A is a location. Okay, So because it's measured from here to here. So B, which is this guy here. Yeah? So that's a feature of sides, yeah, because this side's showing you right there. Location is showing the center, here, yeah? And then C, of course, another feature of sides. D, another feature of sides. E, okay, is your feature right there, because see this arrow is showing you the surface of it, yeah? Pay attention. Your L is dimension, so therefore feature of sides. Your G is also a feature of size. Your H, okay, is from here. See that little center, so location. And then J is right here, yeah? So therefore, feature of this surface, yeah? This bottom surface right there. And it's on the object, so therefore it's a feature. And your K is showing you the, look at this, dimension, yeah? So that for showing you the diameter right there. So that for that's a feature of size and your L from center to there. And so that for it is a location. Okay.
your material condition so MMC or LMC and we have to uh, take a look at how to do so that's your problem number 37 so we're going to start putting that into it okay so we go A and then um, you don't have it for material conditions your B which is this guy so we start from the uh, 6 to 25 and you will have to calculate okay to get the MMC and LMC so you can get this right away so you still have to calculate that and here is the tolerances in order for us to get the MMC so make sure you review your MET 101 how to calculate your MMC and LMC okay so look at this so MMC maximum so therefore I will show you how to do it so 0 0.625 yeah maximum so here you have a 1 2 3 so you're going to add 3 and to it so you get 628 okay the same thing minus 3 so it's going to get minus uh, 0 0.622 okay and so and so yeah so use this um, tolerance to get this from the table uh, from this uh, diagram to that table so this is telling you we don't have a perfect you know, dimension or or so even if you violate the rules right of your probability and then you got a perfect size in size dimension here yeah, it is impossible to verify what you get so whatever that is, just make sure you understand that we don't have a perfect dimension. These are all about, you know, how to do your tolerance. So variation, your size, form, location, orientation. You always have that variation, okay? So no two independent measurements, they're not the same exactly. Um, even if you have the best measuring device or precision inspection tools, right? You name it, you still have the margin of error, yeah? Um, every variable dimension or drawing, um, you also have a related tolerance, yeah? So your tolerance is just a range, and we accept that variation in that range, yeah? Or error that can happen in that range. So if you have like this, so this is the acceptable error. Yeah, you can make because you can get an exact thing like that. You wanna come like on and off of this, okay? And you can on and off within this range. Yeah. So the specified dimension is a one half inch, okay? But we uh, have concluded that we can accept the feature size as long as it's is actual measurement right if they don't exceed the limits of that tolerance range you're okay so the actual measurement is uh will be no smaller than 0 0.495 okay so here you want to take it out and then add it up 0 0.005 so you can go any larger than the upper you can go any lower than the lower limit out this range. So if the part measurement lines anywhere within the specified tolerance range, then you're going to accept that, yeah, production. Okay, so mating parts, mating parts mean like you're connecting, you know, two parts together, you're connecting two parts together like a shell and a hole. So both dimensioned exactly the, the same way, yeah. So you can end up with a shell that's like 0 0.495 in diameter because they are mating and the other you know, hole is going to be give the maximum which is 0 0.505 otherwise the shell won't fit into that hole. Yeah? Um, total difference between the shell and the hole is going to be like 0 0.010 clearance. This is just showing you the clearance that you can uh, have this amount between the hole and the shaft. You still need a little bit you know, of space in between them. So we could have like a shaft diameter 
is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that's your max, and the whole diameter is going to be like 0 0.495, 10,000, or we could be at any increment in between uh, those uh, limits, yeah. You can see it with your eyes right now unless you actually draw the diagram with it. And we continue. I'm not going to be asking you the main part fits and things like that. It's just for you to read your knowledge. And you will get it as you do your uh, drawings. Yeah. Okay, so. So mating parts, mating is very important because you're mating two parts, so the function is very important, you know, to keep, so your dimensions and tolerances of mating part doesn't matter, you know, uh, how you do, you still have to be be careful that you keep that function for that, you know, product. So you don't want to mess up the mating part, you don't want to end up with not fitting to each other, because if they're not fitting to each other, you're going to lose a function. So the major questions deal with the purpose to be served by the assembly of the parts. Uh, the major purpose is, again, that they fit together. Yeah, I told you so many times about the how much of the fit error issue uh, people have you know, in, our, in our lines. And it's so important yeah, that you all communicate uh, with your team. Again, the, some of the parts are very big that you will have to use uh, different people you know, on different team working on like uh, different parts of the giant parts. So yeah, mating is a very important even. So be very careful with your drawing. And um, of course, you know, for example, yeah, because assembly is uh, where the parts are fitting to each other, so relationship between the parts are important. So the main part fits uh, important to have a uh, good, yeah, good uh, dimensionings and uh, tolerancing, so we can keep the function <laughs> and they fit together. Alright, so then we will get into basic hole and basic shelf system. Um, so let's end this uh, for this part. Okay? I will give you, uh, I'm going to print out the uh, the whole PDF of this, yeah? And uh, you can separate it if you have time. And I'll give it to you so you can be able to see it. Some of the parts that can't, uh, I mean slides, yeah? You can't be able to see it because the background is like white, yeah? I was like printing that for you so you can be able to print it. But anyway, we'll change the background into this a little um, uh, orange or blue one, yeah? And uh, I will print the whole thing for you. And uh, you can, yes, study part by part or uh, you can do the whole thing, yes? Okay.